everyone, Cherry is here and welcome to my January 2022 plan with me video. It is day 7 of Cherry Street series. We are already halfway through and we are also a couple of weeks away to the new year. If you are setting up or starting a bullet journal for 2022, I also uploaded a video of that which I will link above and on the video description if you're looking for some inspirations and ideas on what to include for your yearly setup. Now let's dive right into my January 2022 bullet journal setup starting with the cover page. This is where the fun part of bullet journaling is for me. It is to get creative with my monthly planning or spreads and that is incorporating themes. But of course, this is just an extra that you may or may not do. But one thing you will love about using themes is that it divides your months and you can quickly determine what month you are looking at when flipping through the pages. So the theme I'm going for January as what I've shown in my short preview is vintage cameras and I'm using gouache paints for my cover page illustration. I always sketch them out first before painting so it's easier to paint. After mixing all the colors I need, I started painting the camera. For this, I used a reference photo which is the Kodak Signet 40, a rangefinder camera produced from 1956 to 1959 in the US. I'm only using shades of gray and black for this and some white paint for the highlights. Before filming this setup, I initially thought of using watercolors for the painting but I decided to just go for gouache because over the times I've used it, I just love the consistency and the matte finish of the painting. The design of the camera itself was pretty easy and nothing too complicated and using a thinner brush or a detailed brush made it easier to work with especially with the details on the counter or the top part of the camera. So I highly recommend getting one of these detailed brushes if you want those tiny details to be as precise as possible. I'm actually using this brush for most of the paintings because I'm working with a small scale but sometimes I just forget to change the brush if it can be done with a slightly bigger one. If you have been around for a while now, you already noticed that most of my bullet journal monthly setups are decorative and artistic compared to my yearly setup that is simple and minimal in my opinion and that is because one of my goals this year is to improve my art skills using different mediums while keeping on top of my tasks and organizing my life. I know some of you get overwhelmed especially when starting a bullet journal because of artistic spreads like mine that you see everywhere online. But know that you don't have to be artistic when starting a bullet journal and just like most of you, I also got overwhelmed when I first started but over the time, I made these beautiful pictures that I see online as inspiration instead while keeping my intentions clear and with the encouragement given by everyone in the community, it makes me proud of my progress looking back at my previous bullet journal. There are still struggles until now for sure but it is part of the steps to reach that goal so I hope this motivates you as well. On another note, I also do simple setups for my sister which I also film and upload here for some of you that prefer simple and doable setups. My favorite part about this painting is adding the shadows and highlights because they give more depth and realistic look to the painting. I also wish I realized this sooner because I was also hesitant of using dark colors 
especially black when I was still new to painting, thinking that I might go way too dark and won't be able to fix it afterwards. If you noticed in my past monthly plan with me videos, I never painted anything black. So this was such a huge move for me to conquer that hesitation. Also, I did a simple Polaroids theme back then for my sister's bullet journal, so this might be similar already for some of you, but I really wanted to do a vintage camera theme before, so I thought this would be the perfect time to do one for my bullet journal in my own style. After I painted the camera, I also painted some stacked books underneath to make it more interesting instead of just painting a camera alone. So I'm painting three books here. I chose to paint them with brown tones for that vintage look as well. I think I have included so many book illustrations in my setups but never got to actually make a book or library theme which so many of you have requested. I really hope this year I get to finally execute that in one of my monthly themes. On the back of the camera and books, I am painting a green plant on a vase I'm just using the same shade of brown, added a bit of yellow ochre paint to it, and making sure that I paint the right side a little darker to make it look dimensional as well. If you happen to paint the lighter part dark, you can always take white paint and blend it to achieve the highlight. For the plant, I'm using two shades of green. The dark one is for the leaves with the back facing, while the light green for the front. I mentioned this before but I'm saying it again that one of the things that held me back from using gouache was my hands being crazy sweaty. And it was such a struggle, so my hand got some black print around the camera and I tried not to freak out. I used my white acrylic paint pen to cover them up, so you will see here some white blobs around the painting later on. Now we are done with the illustration, next I'm adding the monthly title, under it I decided to add some round shapes using the color scheme I used here, and then I'm using my Sakura Pigma Micron and 005, I'm writing January in a hollowed sans serif font. A couple of weeks ago, I made some handmade vintage papers that I was planning to use for my December setup, but I ended up not using them there, so I decided to use them here instead. I just stained them with black coffee, but you can also do this with black tea, then sun dry it, or use an oven. The smell of coffee didn't go away, but I love the smell of my journal now. Then the final touch for my cover page is a frame using the same black pen and we are finally done! 
And to complete this whole spread, I'm writing a quote on the left page, which I usually do in all of my setups. I'm using the same font for this quote that says, When you focus on the good, the good gets better. The quotes I choose also tend to be theme related, but if you have a different quote in mind, that is also great. I'm also adding those five round shapes on top along the frame that I will draw afterwards. And that is finally it for this whole cover spread. I really love how this turned out. I like the balance between the two pages, but now let's move on to the next one. On the left page will be my monthly calendar starting by gluing another ripped coffee stained paper on top. Then I'm writing the monthly title in the same style and font with the 5 round color scheme. I'm actually doing it for every spread to make it cohesive. Then I'm using this green Tombow brush pen to draw a thick line as the background for the days of the calendar. Then I'm drawing the calendar itself using the black pen. I chose to do a smaller calendar this time, just like a month in a glance layout. And I also decided to continue the freehand lines here, but in the end, it looked pretty weird in my eyes, so I added multiple strokes on each line of camera, and that gave me sketchy lines, which I think looks better. Then I just filled it with the days and dates of the month for January, and lastly, a drop shadow using a gray brush pen. On the space at the bottom, that is where I'm going to write the important events for January. There won't be much events for me next month, so I think the space here is enough. I just wrote events in a small uppercase lettering, then I drew a rectangular box with drop shadows as well. On the right side, I'm drawing two instant photo films or Polaroids, but first I did some tape looking doodles as if the films are attached to the page. Both of these is where I'm writing my goals and focus for the month. Drawing the Polaroid films consists of two boxes with a little bit more space at the bottom and that is where we're going to write the titles. But before that, I decided to add depth to these illustrations using gray paints to make it look more interesting. You can also use brush pens for this, but of course, you can also skip this part if you are already happy with the simplicity of it. step is we are going to turn this page into a Dutch door so I'm going to cut it in the middle. On the other side of the Dutch door is going to be my mood tracker. I'm adding the same coffee stained paper here to mimic the one on the left page when you flip it and I'm also doing the same thing on the bottom of this spread. I didn't realize this before when I did the same layout using rip craft paper on the corners, but doing this actually makes the whole spread as one. 
This mood tracker is very simple this time. My moods are color-coded as usual and I thought using the color scheme would be a nice idea. Then I'm just writing all the dates vertically. On the next page will be my habit tracker. I always like to put my habit and mood tracker alongside each other or in one spread. For this layout, I'm gonna be tracking 4 habits this time and each habit is in these smaller versions of Polaroid films and has 7x5 spaces inside the frame. Before we go to the next spread, we are gonna be doing another vintage camera painting here. We are painting the front part of this camera called Keystone Bel Air Movie Camera that appeared around 1960s. I started painting the leather case of the camera using a mix of burnt sienna and yellow ochre. The camera has a metal body so I'm painting the rest of the area with grey paint except for the lens and viewfinder. At this point, I'm painting the viewfinder and the lens with black. The first shade I painted on the lens is actually a bit lighter, if you can see that on the screen. That is next to the focus ring. I am just basing the colors and shades I used from a reference photo. To be honest, I can't paint or draw something more realistically without a reference photo because I wanted to see all the details, especially if it's my first time to paint a certain subject. Otherwise, I will feel lost in the middle of the process. So if you want to explore and try realistic painting approach as well, I highly recommend looking for reference photos of the subjects that you want to paint and that way you will have a better idea of where the shadows and highlights should be, all the details and elements, and it makes you able to accurately paint it with great likeness. By that, you will also have to understand the importance of a good reference photo, especially for a subject that you are not familiar with. This vintage camera is an example for me, so the first thing I did was to look for pictures of this with high definition, good lighting, colors that are not too pale nor too intense, then I am good to start. It took me around 2-3 to three hours to paint the bigger illustrations in my setups and I also take breaks in between which is also very important to me. Some of you really wanted to try painting in their bullet journal but don't have the time to do so which I completely understand. I can also say that there are times I don't get to paint and finish the rest of my setup and as much as possible, I don't pressure or stress myself to finish them right away because bullet journaling shouldn't be stressful. The other weekly spreads for the month that I don't get to show you how I set them up in my plan with me videos, I made it a habit to just set up the daily boxes or the spaces I need to write down my tasks for that I can use right away. And then I have the time around the week, maybe at least. 30 minutes a day that is when I gradually do my illustrations and it's also one way for me to relax in a day and be by myself so yeah I just wanted to share that 
And back to the painting, I also painted books underneath the camera and a vase with flowers behind. Then instead of using paint for the shadow, I decided to use a pencil. Sometimes I like to experiment things and this is one of them. But yeah, it gave me the same effect anyway. Next, we are moving on to create my monthly content planner that I use as much as my weekly spreads since creating content is my full-time job at the moment. I am drawing another calendar layout here but a little bit bigger than the previous one. You can do this layout for your monthly log if you would like so you can write the important events directly on it since it has a bigger space. I also did the same style that has those sketchy lines. The grid has 22 by 16 spaces and I made the first column wider than the rest of the columns because I'm writing Instagram and YouTube for each row on that space so I can plan what content I want to publish specifically. There is a space on the line at the bottom of this grid because we are going to paint a little decoration in a few. Now on this space here is for my monthly socials tracker where I track the following for my social handles. I'm using the small polaroids as well for the layout. I usually track my Instagram and YouTube only but I decided to add TikTok even though I don't really plan my content for that platform. attaching my handmade coffee stain paper again on the corners and as much as possible I try to place them alternately for each spread so they don't look the same but still as one when you flip through them. I hope that makes sense. Then it's time to paint this small illustration just to make this page a little interesting as well. I am painting of course another vintage camera here. This one is called the Diana camera which is a toy camera and first appeared during the early 1960s. The photographs coming out of this has slightly blurred composition that can provide dreamlike quality. These are inexpensive and are usually given as a novelty gift. Since I'm painting it in a smaller scale, I didn't think about making it detailed anymore and then beside it is also a vase with flowers. I also had to look again on the column of the calendar here because I kind of went too far and took the YouTube space there but that's okay. Then the other page here will be just for my to-do list. Then I'm also painting another camera here and again in a simplified and not so detailed approach in my opinion unlike the first few paintings. This is a recreation of one of the camera paintings by Rosa of Rosie's Sketchbook on Instagram and I will link her account on the description so you can check out her page. I can't say if there is an actual camera that exactly looked like this but I just made sure instead that the colors I'm using will make it look old-fashioned and vintage-y and those are just several shades of brown. If you visit my old plan with me videos with paintings on them or my first exclusive painting videos, You'll notice that they look flat and dull because I wasn't able to paint them with contrast. But there will be times now that I still forget to add shadows on some parts of my paintings during filming and I just notice them afterwards. But that's okay as well, I'm still learning and there is so much more to learn. I think these paintings and this spread were probably the easiest but I'm very happy with them as well. And after that this spread is finally done, we can now flip over to the next spread and start setting up for my weekly spread. 
We are going to set up my first weekly in this video, but if you would like to see the rest of my spreads for January and all of my other spreads, I always share them on my Instagram page, so check it out at Charisti or on the link on the video description. The layout I went for this is similar to my coffee-themed October 2021 weekly layouts. I am writing week 1 over here and a mini weekly calendar under it. Then I'm drawing 6 boxes where I'm gonna be writing my tasks for each day. I also used this yellow brush pen for the background of the daily titles. You can always switch to a different color if you would like to follow this layout. I realized that I wrote the dates incorrectly in the weekly calendar above, so I covered them up with my white pen of camera and corrected it afterwards. I also almost forgot about the 5 round shapes here in this spread, so I quickly added them here. But then let's move on to the last step of this spread, which is yet again another painting. And it will be the biggest one so far in this setup. I'd like to start with adding some masking tape around it to create nice straight edges in the end. Then I will be painting a camera that is laying on top of a book. I forgot to save where I saw my reference photo for this, but this particular camera is similar to the Cora Dignet rangefinder camera released in 1960s as well in Reutlingen, Germany. I'm also painting a leather cover on it first before painting the rest of the camera's body. Then I'm using the same mixture of brown from the leather cover painting added with lots of white paint for the old looking pages of the book under it. Then I added shadows on the edges while making it lighter on the middle. Since I can't paint the actual letters of the pages, I am just scribbling imperfect lines as well as the division of the pages on the center. Then I also added some shadows around the camera to separate it from the book. Underneath the camera, I am painting a film with black paint. This picture is very nostalgic to me because it absolutely reminded me of childhood. Our family once had a film camera. I would find some negatives and view them against the light. I get wowed and amused when I see something or someone on it. And I always like to look at the old developed family pictures and even arrange them on a photo album. Let me know if you prefer printed photos or digital ones in the comments. And then the next thing I painted here is this little notebook peeking in the corner and then a branch of leaves. And yeah, that is finally it for the first weekly spread for this initial January 2022 bullet journal setup. 
I really hope you enjoyed this vintage camera theme this month and maybe got some ideas for your own bullet journal spreads for the first month of the year or the next ones. I know I get to make a few more spreads in my previous setups, but these will work for me for now. But don't worry, I will be trying out different spread ideas in the next months and show them to you for more inspirations. And of course, we are not ending the video yet because it's time to show you what you can win for Cherie Street's Day 7. Today's giveaway prize is also kindly sponsored by Notebook Therapy. One of you can win this A5 Tuki Suzume dot grid journal from their Moonflower collection in a gorgeous coral pink linen hardcover and gold gilded page edges plus a Moonflower washi tape set. This giveaway is also open internationally and as always, the giveaway rules are on the video description so if you want to enter, go check it out and I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you all so much for joining me in today's video. Consider subscribing to the channel so you will be updated with my next ones. It would also be highly appreciated. I hope you are all having a lovely season and I will see you again on Cherie Streets Day 8. Bye!